Hello, my name is Neil Eyde from Skyway Software, and in this video I'm going to be covering the Spring MVC scaffolding functionality of Skyway Builder. Now there's a couple of ways to actually uh, initiate the scaffolding, and in this example what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to create a brand new project and I'm going to define the domain object that I want to scaffold within the Spring DSL. So the first thing I'm going to do is create a new project and I will go ahead and call it Order Tracker. I click Finish and the project is created and it exists in my project explorer. The next thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to go in here and I'm going to uh, create a new model package and I will call this model package order.acme.ordertracker.domain and next I will actually go ahead and create a, my domain object. In this case I'm going to create two domain objects. The first one is going to be called customer click finish and I'm going to go ahead and add several fields to customer. The first field will be the customer number. The next field is customer name. This will be their street, city, state, zip and phone. I'll go ahead and make the customer number an ID field and I will make mark it as the primary key and I will save it. The next domain object that I'm going to create is the purchase order domain object. And I will go in here and say new domain object, call it purchase order and while there's a whole variety of fields that I could have in here I'm actually just going to add three fields the first one will be PO number, which is, uh, we'll say that it's an integer. The next one is the order date, which is a date field, and the ship date, which is also a date field. I will specify that this is the primary key, or this is the ob field that uniquely identifies the object. I'll go ahead and save this. And then I'm going to go back to the customer object and I'm going to create a relationship with the purchase order object that I just created. So I'll go ahead and click add, say purchase order, and in this case my intention is for a customer to be able to have multiple um, purchase orders. So I'll go ahead and change the cardinality, hit save, and now I'm ready to scaffold. It's important to, uh, to make note that uh, this was just one way for me to actually get my domain objects created. I could have, for example, already had some database tables and reverse engineered those into the domain object of my application. Um, but I'm actually not going to, um, uh, but that's, that's actually covered in a separate video. Um, but now when I want to scaffold, I'll go ahead and just right click on the domain object that I want to scaffold. I'll say scaffolding, sprint, generate CRUD. And now it will go through and generate the entire Spring MVC application from my domain model. And after a few moments, I have my Spring MVC application ready to go. One of the things that I still need to do is I need to go ahead and associate the data access objects that were created by my you know, by the scaffolding. I need to go ahead and associate those with a database connection uh, in my sandbox. And so the my database connection was a connection that I created in a previous video for when I set up the sandbox. So I'm going to go ahead and configure that as the connection for that data access object. And for my purchase order data access object, I'm going to do the exact same thing. I'll switch to the database configuration tab, select my database, save it, and all of my errors have gone away. I can actually go in here and take a look at the code, but I'll cover that in a different video. So here's a summary of everything that was created. I have now a fully bootstrapped and ready to run Spring MVC application which consists of Spring, JPA, and Hibernate. The implementation consists of Spring controllers, Spring services, Spring at repository co uh, components for my data access objects. I have a full set of JPL name queries that were generated. I have a whole set suite of JUnit tests that were created. My UI was cr generated with SiteMesh and I have a localized JSP pages and client-side validation using Spring JS and Dojo.